Hello, my name is Kirk Gillespie, General Manager of the Swain Meter Company. Here today, we are going to put on a demonstration for you the capabilities of the Swain Meter with some very large clamps and some very small wire. What we have here today is a generator putting out some DC current. We're putting it out this cable through about 36 feet of cable and then coming back through the middle of our clamps, we are checking it with a current meter and then just back to the power supply. This is an 18 gauge wire that we are utilizing and we can change the current level, uh, comparing it with the inline and we'll actually bring in, in a few moments, we'll bring in a seven inch clip uh, as a comparison as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So here with no current on our on in our current generator, we're gonna to come to our swing meter and we're gonna get it turned on. We're gonna flip the switch to auto. This is going to allow the swing meter to auto zero. It's going to find the zero position of the 34 inch clamp that's hanging there, canceling out the earth's magnetic field effect on that sensor in that point in space. Now that we've got our green ready light, and that we can see here the comparison between the inline meter as well as the swaying meter. Now we're gonna come over to the current generator and we're gonna turn this on. We can adjust this value on the current generator, but note here as you come up to the swaying meter that our values with the clamp on ammeter and the inline circuit are very, very close. While focusing on the value of the swaying meter, I'm going to move uh, the 18 gauge cable around in the ID of this clamp. Show a little bit of this. So as I'm moving this around, in the ID of this clamp, I'm just going to keep circling this around in here and note the change, the minimal change on the swing meter. Go ahead and set this down. Next, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to change to the 56 inch clamp. So I'm going to shut off the swaying meter. I'm going to shut off the current generator. And we're going to unplug the 34 and move over to the 56 inch clamp. We can throw, we can show you all of the same demonstrations with the larger one. So again, without any current going through here, we can turn on our swaying meter into auto, let it cancel the Earth's magnetic field effect on the sensor in this point in space. Again, this is going to be the 56 inch clamp. We'll have to give this a moment to zero down. Now that our 56 inch clamp has been zeroed, what we're going to do is turn on some current and we're going to we're going to notice a value now note that the value on the swain meter is not the same as the one on the meter the fluke meter with with the inline the reason for this is this swain meter has been calibrated one to one with the 34 inch clamp and only has a multiplier factor for the 56 inch clamp very important to note that meter does not read one-to-one -one with all sensors if multiple sensors have, are, are to be serialized with the meter. So here we have a value of 0.926 and over here on our multiplier tag in the 2 amp range we have a multiplier of 1.43. So 
So we're going to multiply this by 1.43 equaling 1.324 in comparison to the 1.32 on the inline meter. Now, also as an example, the same cable, we're going to wiggle this one around into the ID of the 56 inch clamp. Note the, note the minimal change on the meter as I do this. Okay. okay, now what we want to do is give a comparison to a swain meter with a smaller clip size. This happens to be a seven inch clip that I've got here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to auto zero with my second swain meter with a seven inch clip. What I'm, what's gonna happen here is I'm going to zero this out in this particular point in space. And in a moment here, I'm going to, I'm gonna show you the very, the very crucial importance to this as soon as we get down to a zero. So we've got our green ready light. Note that as I move this sensor around in space, that that value is changing. I am not measuring an actual current, but it is the magnetic field within my sensor reacting to the Earth's magnetic field. If I bring this down very close to where I zeroed out, we get right down close to this, the actual zero. But moving it around, let's say 90 degrees, gives us a considerably different value than what it was when we were in our zeroed position. This is very important to note when zeroing out a sensor. You want to have it in the same orientation in space as what you're going to actually be utilizing it when taking the measurement. So I can open up my meter here, and I'm going to put my 18 gauge cable in there and get it, and close it once again. So the 1.321, very similar to the 1.32 of the inline fluke meter. And on the other, and on this sway meter that we've got, we are still tied to the 56 inch clamp with a 1.46 multiplier factor. Thank you. Thank you for watching today. In conclusion, we just want to cover, cover what we, we've seen here today. We've shown that as long as a pipeline or a current source something that you're being measured, it needs to be measured, can fit within the ID of our clamps, clips or clamps, we can accurately measure. What we've seen here for the most part today was within about a half a percent of actual value uh, is the accuracy of the swing meter. Additionally, what, what we want to note is that the demonstration of a meter and the, the need to utilize the multiplier when utilizing your larger sensors other than just the baseline 1-1 one, one calibrated sensor to the meter. This is a very important aspect. Uh, as you can see there, you, you could have a value set or 30 to 40, maybe even 50 percent incorrect if that multiplier factor is not being utilized. If you have any questions, Please feel free to contact us, information at swaymeter.com. Again, thank you very much.